welcome back to the channel. As you saw there, we just pulled off the oil pan. Put the proper amount of sludge I would think that should be in there after sitting for 40 years. But, all in all, we're looking pretty darn good in here. There is next to no rust on anything. Now, I wasn't able to get a harmonic balancer puller today, flange puller. Uh, hope to get one here real soon, well, maybe tomorrow, to pull it off. So, what I'm going to attempt to do here today is I'm going to try to start taking all the caps off for the connecting rods. Now, for the most part, most of them are good. They're right up here, easy to get. The bad part is, because the engine's stuck and I can't move the pistons, some of them... There's one bolt, the other bolt's down inside. She's gonna take some work getting down in there to try to reach those other ones. So I'm not gonna really, I'm not gonna film it. It's gonna take a while, or I'm not gonna video it, I should say. It's gonna take a while to get in there. But that is my plan here this evening, is to start trying to pull out all those bolts and get rid of all those rod caps. Well, it went a little better than I thought. It only cost me one quarter inch ratchet that'll never be the same again. But even way down there, that was the one down there was the problem. But I got all cap nuts off, every one of them. And uh, didn't even round or strip the corners of any of them. There's the first cap. Let's get a closer look what's going on in here. Just move the camera here to get something to a little, little brighter. Just wipe the soda bit. That, that looks good. Of course, those little, those little scuff lines you see there, pretty normal. It's pretty standard for any, anything. There's definitely not an edge you can grab the nail or anything on there. And there is no rust. So any luck, the rest of those will be the same. And that crank will be the original size. And I can just reuse it. So anyway, I'm going to carry on. Try to get the rest off. Hopefully it all goes smooth. Now before I jump in here and go crazy, I don't know if you can see it. But all the caps are marked. And all the rods are marked as well too. This one here would be number 7 at the back. There's a 7 on the rod side. And there's a 7 on the cap side. And all the numbers are only on one side. So I'll, I'll keep them organized. But that just makes it much easier to put these all back together. And just like that, with the magic of video, <laughs> all the caps are off. And I won't lie, a few of them are a little tough. Hard to get a hold of it square when the other end is so far down but they all look perfect there is no scores of them at all and a little bit of surface rust that you see on the crank here as you can tell just going over a little bit of oil with my finger i can polish that that rust right off so it's not even pitted at all it's just more or less i don't know what you call it just stain it i guess so crank will be able to be salvaged for sure hopefully the block is the block is my only thing that i'm worried about right now Valves, yeah, they'll get all new valves. One broken, regardless of how it broke, it's getting new valves. They're really, they're, they're fairly cheap for what they are. So anyway, also with the power of video, it is the next day, and it's time to take off a harmonic balancer. So today, I was able to borrow a flange puller and got myself some bolts here. We're gonna to try to pull that harmonic balancer off. Now what you saw was, I was just going through the harmonic balancer, cleaning up the threads, just in case I snap off some bolts, at least it'll make it easier for them to come out. Now I don't know how hard that is on there. It, it, could, be, it could be on there real good. But anyway, we're gonna do what we can to try to prevent the studs from breaking off and getting stuck in there, just in case we have to keep going. Now, the harmonic balancer, will probably not be used again. Uh, there is a rubber insert that's in here, and I think I'm just gonna get rid of this. And for the price of them, I might as well get a new one just to be safe. But I got my three holes cleaned out. 
Center is nice and deep. I have uh, the punch that actually will go all the way to the bottom of that tapered hole. So we'll set it up and hopefully we can pull it out of there. So there we go, we got her on. And with any luck, this thing will pop right off. And it is coming off super smooth. Just what the doctor ordered. And there we go. Harmonic balance are off. Even the keyway fell out. Again, I am baffled by how smooth and how good this engine is coming apart. Next order of business is to pull off the timing cover. And we're going to pull out the timing set out of here. The gears and the chain. Now, I don't know why, but it's four 916 head bolts and four half inch size heads bolts but uh, we'll jump right on here zip them off quick and see what it looks like Yeah, it's just a tad dry. Actually, the seal looks like it's burnt right out of here. So at the time this was running, that seal was going. So as we get another a closer look in here, the uh, timing set itself looks really good. I uh, will we'll double check the pitch of the teeth and the girth to see if it's worth saving. Though, in reality, I don't know what I'm doing for a cam yet, so this time and set might go. But, somebody was heavy on the foot. They liked, they like feeding near the onions, because that time and chain is completely wore out with only 97,000 kilometers on it. But, now I just got to get the center bolt out of the main top gear, which is, this is the one that's actually attached to the camshaft. So the camshaft bolt here. That's a 5 8 5 8 ratchet you're going to need on that. And it's coming off nicely, as is everything. So now, now we should be able to slide time and set gear off. Yep. Just like that. And there we go. Time set's off. And there is the end of our camshaft. All right, so next thing we got to get out here first before this cam comes out. I don't know if you can see this here, this gear right here. This is the oil pump drive, which also is the distributor. The distributor end comes from in below here because the engine is upside down. So all we got to do is take a little ratchet here, give a little tap. And this should drop right out. Should. <coughs> oh, it's stiff. There it goes. It's not really a not really a good way to get in there for this. I think the shaft is a little gummed up. Uh, if you can see it here, the shaft runs through this raised edge here all the way to the top. 
There it goes. And there is the drive for the pump. This is a hex drive which goes to the inside of the pump. I didn't show me taking that off. And then this gear runs off the side of your cam. And that little star shape in there, or that slot shape, that's where your distributor runs. Now I just uh, rotated the engine back over here. I almost forgot, uh, before I take the camshaft out, I have to pull the push rod out for the fuel pump. The fuel pump goes in here on a little, on a little finger, and then the shaft rides on a lobe on a cam, and it just pumps back and forth, pushing on the plunger for the fuel pump. I almost forgot about that. I was gonna put put a puller on here and kind of like a like a slide hammer, give it a little tap to see if it'll pop out, but that could have damaged the side of the lobe. So now what's in here? I'm not sure what they really call them. I've always referred to them as bud nuts. It's just a square hole inside the end of a plug. Now I didn't have anything, so I took my uh, one of my punches here and I just ground it down, and just enough to fit inside the hole. And tap it in then just using an adjustable wrench here we'll take that plug out of there sometimes you just gotta make do with what you got I'm putting the new ones back in because there I think there's four of these plugs on this engine put the new ones back in I will get the proper wrench just so it doesn't mar it up or anything but that's what it is there. It's a square plug. And now, somehow, oh, never mind. Somehow, it's actually coming out real easy. That is the push rod. This rides, this rides here on the camshaft on one of the lobes, and that's what operates your fuel pump. And we want to be as careful as we can getting this out. We don't want to ding any of the lobes. The bearings inside, I'm not really worried about that much. But I want to be careful on the edges of the lobes of this cam. Because uh, you never know, we might be reusing this thing again. And there it is. One Mopar. Big block camshaft. So all in all, this doesn't look that bad. Yeah, you can see some marks on it where the tappets were sitting for 40 years. But when you really look at the wear of where it rolled over, there's, there's no scuffing on this thing at all. We'll be measuring it, but I'm pretty sure we're going to try to polish it up, use it again. I don't know if I want to go with a big cam or not. Uh, the only downside to it is being an original cam. This is a cast cam. You can tell by the rough metal. And if you actually spin it around here, you can see the casting line all the way down it of where it was casted. Now, there's definitely nothing wrong with it for uh, regular driving and, uh, I guess, OEM standards. But I do want to do spice this baby up a little bit. So I might, uh, might look into what a new cam will cost. Well, I have to apologize there. I thought I was recording, but apparently I didn't push the button good enough or close enough. But all I did here is I started pulling out the rear main seal. Now these Chrysler engines, they are a two-piece rear main. Um, they fit in this little block here, and the seal is actually a little insert that goes in there, and the other half is on the block side. Just came out with a couple 12-point um, head bolts and then I just used a little pry bar and it popped right out so not very not very exciting but I did try to record it just forgot to hit the button but anyway that's the end of this video next video will be popping off those caps and lifting that crank out and hopefully she'll come out with no not too much trouble and these rods will open up far enough to allow it to pass by I'll have to get some Get something to kind of cover the threaded ends just so i'm not dragging them over the journals but anyway as usual thanks for watching thumbs up is always greatly appreciated thanks for stopping by and watching catch you guys again later